good evening to all uh, my topic is uh, treatment planning evaluation treatment planning and evaluation for carcinoma cervix before start i would like to thank the organizers and uh, uh, dr karthi from united hospital for giving me this opportunity to talk to you on this great scientific occasion so let us go into the uh, presentation so my presentation will be following these contents initially as it is an educational program initially i will talk about a little bit about the conventional treatment planning which we were using based on two dimensional information later i will talk about 3d treatment planning and then i will talk about imrt and vmat planning uh, techniques as well as the optimization constraints and later i will talk about the brachytherapy and its role in the treatment of uh, cs cervix because without brachytherapy the treat the treatment of cs cervix will not get complete so as you all know cancer of cs cervix is one of the uh, most common uh, cancer among the women especially in the southeast asia and the uh, huge amount of uh, women were diagnosed every year uh, with the with this uh, uh, cervix cancer so as far as uh, the treatment uh, radiation treatment is concerned for cervix it consists of two part uh, mainly the external wound radiotherapy uh, which was delivered using either cobalt unit or linear accelerator the other one is the brachy so the brachytherapy nowadays in most places they were using using high dose rate after load remission first let us see the external beam radiotherapy treatment technique for the cs cervix so the external beam radiotherapy technique consists of three component initially it was delivered using the conventional treatment that is the 2d uh, treatment technique the latter with the advancement of mlc the three dimensional radiotherapy has been evolved and nowadays most of the places the high intensity modulated radiotherapy or volume modulated arc therapy is being practiced so if you look into the split out i mean the steps involved in the external radiotherapy it starts with the positioning of immobil preparation of immobilization and the simulation then it comes treatment planning and then selection of uh, beam energy and then dose prescription and the treatment so as the previous speakers uh, spoke about the uh, patient positioning and dissimulation my topic will be mainly on the treatment planning and the uh, optimization techniques so first let us see the conventional treatment planning technique which were used for the uh, cervix uh, pay, uh, uh, treatment so this slide shows the appa technique which were uh, initially used uh, i would say some 15 20 years back uh, when i was working in a government institution so this this is an ap film which was taken using the simulator and then here uh, the main uh, main, main uh, working pattern here is our forest the landmarks are only bony landmarks so if you see the superior border is l4 l5 junction and then the inferior border is uh, obturator foramen and if you look into the lateral border it is almost 1 to 2 cm from the pelvis brim this is how we will design the uh, field for an uh, appa uh, appa field this slide shows the lateral field which was used for the box technique of uh, using the conventional uh, simulator film so here also similarly the anterior uh, i mean uh, an anterior and posterior borders are uh, fixed based on the uh, uh, bony landmarks so this is how the lateral field is designed in case of cervix in the conventional method so and another thing uh, is in conventional treatment as we don't have any mlc we normally use the blocks for shielding the normal tissues so this slide shows the uh, corner shielding used in case of appa field or in case of box fields used 
in the conventional treatment. So here the uh, the uh, the eye upper upper area was shielded for the bowel loops, and the lower part is shielded for the femoral heads. So this slide shows the uh, shielding uh, method uh, used in case of lateral fields. And then this slide shows how the shielded uh, uh, field covers the nodal areas in case of anterior as well as lateral fields. So apart from this regular treatment, uh, we also used to do the midline shielding uh, in case of conventional treatments because these midline shields were used to boost the nodal areas uh, mostly after the brachytherapy. So we used to make customized blocks most of the times or we use standard blocks. So if you look into the width of this uh, block in the central area, it comes around four centimeter. So the intention here is to increase the dose to the parametrium. So this midline shielding te technique will be used mainly for the cases which we are not able to do the brachytherapy or which we are not able to do the template brachytherapy. But again, it has a uh, uh, controversial, uh, uh, controversial area. Some people will say that it may not be an appropriate method as it shields the primary area. So we also used to design fields for the uh, irradiation of paraaortic nodes in the conventional technique. This is how the field will look like and this slide shows the shielding areas of an anterior flame. Uh, in the conventional technique also we used to do both uh, APPA field as well as four field. So this slide shows the comparison between, between the two field, I mean APPA and then four field box technique. Though that those times we don't have the CT information, we used to do the manual planning using isoscope charts. So now let us see about the 3D CRT uh, the treatment technique used in the uh, CS cervix. So the main advantage of the 3D CRT is we will be using the CT images. So here we have the opportunity to contour the target as well as OARs and we can use the MLCs or customized blocks to shield the uh, normal tissues. Uh, and here we will use two or four or uh, more number of fields to in order to get the required uh, field shape. So it has certain advantages because here we can quantify the uh, dose uh, received by the OIAS as well as the targets. And another thing is uh, when compared with the conventional, which we will be mostly doing point dose calculation, here we will be using a 3D uh, algorithm which will give the better uh, results and accurate uh, values. So as far as the uh, contouring uh, guidelines is concerned, there are many guidelines available uh, for regional wise. Uh, this is an example I am showing NIH uh, uh, recommended guidelines for contouring cervix as well as endometrium. So, but it varies widely uh, because uh, in the, every country has their own recommendation and it varies from department to department. And it is better, uh, it is depending upon the each institution to select the protocol for the contourization, which I am not going to talk in detail. Let us move to the aim of our 3D CRT. So like any other radiotherapy treatment planning, the aim of the 3D CRT is to give maximum dose to the target and the minimum dose to the OR. So uh, most, as I told you, mostly for a pelvis patient, it's a golden standard using box technique. Where we will be very rarely using more than four fields in case of 3D CRT. And as far as the energy is concerned, we will be using 10 or 15 MV, depending upon the availability. Uh, as the separation of the patient is expected to be higher in case of pelvis, so we will not prefer the 6 MV for pelvis irradiation. So dose ranges from 45 to 50.4 depending upon the stage depend as per the uh, treating consultant's choice. 
so if you look into the beam configuration used for this uh, box uh, the 3d crt it uh, varies widely like now the most of the whole pelvis irradiation will be using appa and uh, uh, most of the times as i told you we will use box technique for the pelvis irradiation and very rarely in case of smaller diseases we will use oblique fields and in case of boost we will be using a crossfire field technique uh, which helps to treat only the primary and to reduce the dose to the femur let us look into the details so this slide shows the uh, appa field created using 6mv photon field normally in our clinics we won't use as it is an education program i am just showing how the distribution will look like if you use if we use 6mv photon beam for our pelvis so if you look into that uh, isros lines the maximum dosis comes around 125 percentage so and if you look the parametrium is not uh, i mean uh, not uh, receiving adequate dose if you use 10mv the for the same patient the maximum dose will come down uh, around 113 percentage but still it has some part of missing in the parametrium but if you go for 15 mv we have significantly uh, i mean 90 percentage of the ptv is receiving the prescription dose and if you look into the maximum dose also it falls around 110 so this is the uh, 15 mv photon beam will be used to most other places if it is available So this slide shows the box technique uh, normally used for the treatment of uh, pelvis. So here the advantage of the box technique is it covers the nodal area as well as the PTV, uh, but it reduces the dose significantly to the bowel area. So in this uh, box technique, uh, sometimes if needed uh, to, you, uh, to compensate the missing tissue, we will be using the wedges in case of lateral fields uh, very rarely we will use the wedges in case of anterior fields so if you look into the maximum dose it for it, it is it falls about 103 percentage so there are certain things we have to consider when we do for a 3d crt planning for the pelvis patient so we have to use appropriate number of beams and use the collimator angles when required. And we have to, as I told you, we have to select the beam energy properly as per the patient separation. Uh, use of beam modifiers or use of uh, MLCs or customized block if it is needed. Uh, adjust, uh, you, if, you, if you want to achieve uniform dose distribution, we can adjust the either beam weight or the wedge angle depending upon the patient contour and anatomy. Uh, we also has to select the wedge orientation uh, in for depending upon patient anatomy in order to achieve the, the uniform dose distribution. Uh, very rarely we may use field in field technique if you have a very high hot spot inside the PTV. So this is very rare case and it's not very common. So if you look into the evaluation point of uh, 3D CRT plan, it's like any other treatment plan, the dose, the, I mean 90 to 95 percentage of PTV should receive the prescription, 95 percentage of prescription dose. Uh, here, because of 3D CRT, uh, we, may, we, we can accept up to 90 percentage. Because as we have some limitations, we may not able to achieve the 95 percentage coverage and all other OIR should get less than the tolerance limit as prescribed by the RTOG or any standard dose limits. So we have to look into the hotspot and what is the percentage of hotspot, where it is located and what is the volume of it. And the hotspot ideally should be within the PTV, uh, I mean within the CTV preferably and it should not be near any OIR. Uh, in the case of cervix, it should not be on the rectum or bladder, especially on the anterior part of rectal wall or lower part of bladder. Uh, and if there is a hot spot on the undesirable area, we may change the plan or we have to think of changing the morality. 
uh, we also has to look into the monetary units and the uh, we have to look into the isros lines and uh, each in all the three slices and we can go down even 10 percentage of prescription dose to see how the low dose was spreaded so there are certain advantages of uh, using uh, 3d crt it has less emu when compared with imrt or vmat it has a faster delivery and it delivers uniform dose to ptv uh, as well as nodes it doesn't have much of complexity like imrt or vmat but the biggest it does disadvantage is it delivers the equal dose to the ptv it delivers the equal dose to the ors like a ptv because it doesn't have any intensity modulation so it also deposits the same amount of dose to the ors so to overcome this the imrt and uh, has evolved i mean in the last 10 15 years uh, we we have been practicing in asian countries imrt in most of the clinical sites so in cervix also we have started practicing the VMA, imrt and the latter we have started the vmat also so the main advantage of using imrt for pelvis irradiation is we can use uh, i mean we it it it, it helps uh, in reducing dose to the ors that is the main uh, main uh, advantage uh, especially the low dose spread so we it helps we can use single or multiple imaging methods it, it, it is not necessarily we have to use only in imrt in 3 crt also we can use it so it uses a inverse optimization algorithm uh, to create an intensity modulated uh, distribution on the uh, of decide pattern and it used it uses more than uh, 5 to 12 uh, beams uh, in case of arc we will be using one or two arcs or sometimes partial arcs if needed so the advantage is this uh, intensity modulated uh, therapy creates a customized dose distribution as per the patient's uh, contour and it uh, reduces the dose to ors but at the same time it increases the mu so here we have another advantage of increasing the dose if needed so this slide shows the workflow of imrt it is like any other radiation oncology radiation therapy treatment it starts from the beam placement or beam or arc placement dose prescription then we have to give the dose constraint to the treatment running system as per the radiation oncology requirement and as well as per the uh, standard rec uh, standard uh, constraints for the organ at risk then we have to start the invert of inverse optimization planning we have to do multiple iterations in order to achieve the desired dose uh, to the target as well as to the ors so this is the optimization constraints which we use in our institution because we use the monaco planning system i am showing the constraints which we are using for the uh, uh, in our institution so uh, here uh, the caution should be given to the uh, patient or body because this helps but the, here we are using three la layers of quality overdose uh, for the patient because it helps us in reducing or in controlling the low dose area uh, uh, because uh, these uh, optimizations as we use multiple beams and arcs so if we are not giving proper uh, attention to the low dose area it may tend to increase the low dose area because most of the clinical settings we will not go down to 10 percentage of dose and see for example if you are delivering 50 gray we will not go down to 500 centigrade and see how far it is spreading but this uh, uh, the different uh, by giving stringent constraint to the body we can have a control over the low dose spread uh, in case of vmat and imrt and uh, many 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 planners will be able to achieve the tar target dose 95 percentage will go to the uh, ptv but we have to be equally conscious about the low dose spread on, on in the vmat as well as in imrt so this slide shows the uh, yeah, seven field imrt plan uh, generated for the cs cervix patient so if you see the uh, coverage almost 96 percentage of prescription dose is covered by 95 percentage of volume and the hotspot is around 107 percentage and if you look into the mu is around 
uh, the D2CCF rectum and bladder receives almost equal in dose that goes to the PTV. So this uh, dose volume histogram gives a comparison between a 3D CRT and an IMRT plan. If you look into the uh, coverage of target, you may not find much uh, difference between a 3D CRT and an IMRT plan. But if you look into the critical organs like bowel, bladder, as well as the head of femur, it has a significant difference. So this is what I was mentioning. The IMRT and the VMAT helps in reducing the volume, low dose volume doses going to the uh, critical organs. So there are three points to remember when we do the IMRT and VMAT planning for the pelvis patients. As I told you, we have to use optimized number of beams or arcs. Uh, we have to, and another main thing is we have to give practically achievable dose consent to OIRs in order, in order to achieve a good desired dose, acceptable dose distribution. Because uh, uh, by knowing the uh, rectum is very near to the PTV, we should not be very stringent on the rectal constraint then we may not be able to uh, achieve the desired distribution as well as the planning system will tend to uh, spill the dose outside the PTV. So we also should have the thorough understanding about the optimization uh, constraints as well as optimization cost functions, how it works, because it helps us to use it appropriately. And if needed, we may have, we can use pseudo structure uh, on the heart, I mean the dose which uh, area which was deposited in outside the PTV or uh, in order to control the dose to the OERs, it, it can be used. But most of the planning system doesn't require it nowadays, but some planning systems still needed these dummy structures. So uh, apart from this, as this, as in case of uh, pill, uh, CS service, we most of the times we won't do SIB. We will try to deliver 50 gray or 45 degree in a single phase. So in this case, we can create an intentional intensity modulation by adding one or two gray to the CTV. Because if you allow the system to the intensity modulation, the distribution will be better. At the same times, we should have an eye on the low dose spread outside PTV, as I uh, I used to, as I said already. So we, uh, we also has to consider the uncertainty due to the setup. So this slide shows here VMAT plan generated for the same patient. So here we used two arcs using 10 MV. So here the maximum dose comes around one at eight percentage. So as far as the treatment plan is concerned, uh, there is not much difference between uh, I mean between the VBAT and uh, uh, the an IMRT plan because only the delivery method varies and VMAT gives us a little bit of freedom in escalating the dose. This DVS shows the yeah, difference just for a comparison between a VMAT and a 3 CRT plan. And then this slide shows the difference between an IMRT and a VMAT plan. So if you carefully look into the DVH, there is not much significant difference on the coverage in the PTV, but there is a small differences in the uh, dose to the OERs, especially in case of rectum. So if we, in the VMAT, we have a freedom in escalating the dose. So that is why if you look into the VMAT, the rectal dose is lesser than the IMRT plan. So when, uh, when we talk about the VMAT or IMRT plan evaluation, it is like 3D CRT evaluation only. But here we are very much uh, bothered. We, we, are, we will not compromise on the coverage of uh, PTV. Here the minimum requirement is 95% of PTV should receive 95% of prescription dose. All OIRS should be within the tolerance limit. We, you all know very well what is the dose limit for bladder and rectum. But here we have to give uh, we have to give importance. This target to our tolerance limits includes a brachydose as well. So if you are planning for a 50 gray, and if you look into the bladder constraint, it will be obviously less than the uh, recommended value. 
but we have to consider it based on the 50 gray prescription so then then only we will be able to uh, perform uh, comfortably two or three brachytherapy uh, in sessions so like our 3d crt we also very okay, have to be very careful about hot spot and its location and how far it is its percentage is so sometimes if the hot spot or low dose spread is outside the ptv in case of imrt we may have to increase the number of beams or we have to change the beam uh, began triangle or beam angle and we also have to look into the number of emus and similarly we have to see the dose distribution of the in all the three slices and we have to see the low dose spread as well so this slide uh, maybe will give you an answer because when it comes to pelvis most of people will ask what is a suitable energy to perform a pelvis imrt or vmat so here this dvs shows the vmat plan generated using 6 10 and 15 mv so if you look into the target as it uh, as like other uh, 3d crt or uh, imrt and vmat there is no much significant but there is a small differences in the oir coverages oir doses so we, we may have to do a separate study and there are already studies available in the internet or in the scientific uh, journals so it is purely depends upon the institution policy uh, which energy they will prefer in our institution we will prefer to use 10 mv for the pelvis patient and in institutions who where they don't have the higher energies with 6 mv also they can perform the imrt or vmat for the pelvis patient so this uh, slide may give you a clear picture about the selection of photon beam energy for the pelvis radiation so now let us look into the role of brachytherapy in the treatment uh, planning or in the treatment of cervix. So the brachytherapy, as you all know, is a modality where the radiation source was used to, to deliver the desired dose. And the radiation source was controlled by the computer and it was delivered in or near to the target. So the main advantage is it has a rapid dose escalation, uh, rapid dose escalation. Still, it has a very strong role in the gynec brachytherapy. In most of the places, the brachytherapy is being practiced using uh, high dose rate brachytherapy. Uh, most of the times, it is they are using cobalt 60 or iridium uh, as a source. So this is a uh, this is a paper which uh, was published in 2019. So this paper will show a, uh, a strong, I mean, the in integral part of primary, well, I mean, the role of brachytherapy in treatment of primary cervix. So here they have compared the two uh, group of uh, survival of uh, patients, which were treated with brachytherapy and uh, what uh, external be alone. So the inclusion of brachytherapy in the treatment of cervix has a significant improvement on the overall survival of the patient. So though in certain parts of the places, the role of brachytherapy and then brachytherapy applications is coming down, this paper clearly says the role of brachytherapy in the treatment of cancer and it helps in uh, increasing the overall survival significantly. So this slide shows the applicator uh, used for the, widely used for the uh, brachytherapy uh, treatment. So one is a Fletcher Williamson, other one is a ring applicator. So this slide shows the conventional uh, orthogonal films which were being used for the uh, for the treatment of uh, brachytherapy. So this is a conventional uh, orthogonal X-rays acquired with a 90 degree apart. This is the anterior film and this is a lateral film. The, this is the, this shows the reconstruction of a catheter and the distribution so here and bladder and ductal points were marked based on the ico recommendation and the biggest disadvantage of this method is here it only gives the point doses that has been received by the oirs and uh, when compared with the 3d crt and uh, uh, external beam it is very difficult for you to take a decision because this external beam will give the volume doses but here we have only the point doses. 
so in order to overcome this letter the ct based bracketry planning has started so in the ct based uh, bracketry planning we will we are we will be using the ct slices for the reconstruction or reconstruction of obligator as well as the planning purpose so i am just taking you through the process of uh, bracket therapy ct based planning so we are in the first step where we will be taking a ct scan of the patient after insertion obligator and we will be drawing all the ois bladder and rectum then we will be reconstructing the obligator using axial and sagittal images so uh, this this slide shows the reconstruction of bracketherapy obligators later we will be defining the point a and point b in the ct images then we will be loading the uh, radiation sources in the obligators to generate the radiation dose distribution and then we will be prescribing dose to the point a so the advantage of this method the advantage of this method is uh we will also use to measure the width and the length of the isros lines that is 60 gra volume so the main advantage of this method is we will be able to quantify the radiation i mean we will be able to quantify the dose to the ors and we could be able to measure the d2 cc doses received by the bladder and rectum which will help us to add the external beam and uh, take a decision whether we may need uh, two or three fractions for this patient so this slide shows the american bracketherapy recommended uh, um, and as well as icr 18 and recommended dose limits for the ors as well as the point a so the d2cc bladder should be receive less than uh, i mean 90 gray and it should be it is an eqd in the latter i will tell how the eqd can be calculated using external beam as well as bracket therapy uh, doses uh, and the rectum dose should be less than or equal to 75 gray of eqd2 there are certain points we have to concentrate as far as uh, bracket therapy treatment planning is concerned so as far as uh, recent saffron uh, report is concerned they have reported more than 500 accident uh, happened only in the uh, hdr uh, treatment modality and most of the things are happened due to the manual uh, errors so when we do the bracket therapy planning we have to give caution or we have to be very keen on certain steps it includes uh, using of appropriate activity or using the correct source for the particular unit especially when you have two units in your institution and we have to enter the correct reference length for the obligator used for that particular application and we have to construct the obligator properly as per the commissioning details uh applica we have to in case of ct planning we have to apply the offsets as per the uh, vendor recommendation and we have to load the radiation source uh, in a pattern to us because in bracket therapy we are not doing the hdr hdr bracket we are not doing hdr we are trying to mimic the ldr loading pattern so the source loading pattern should be proper as per the recommended uh pattern both in intra intran cube as well as in the tandem uh my sorry both in uh, ovoid as well as in tandem so we also has to pay attention in placing a reconstruction point a uh, and we also has to place the icru point as per the recommended method and it is highly recommended to go for a secondary check as well as the a checklist so this is the radiation i mean the radiation source loading pattern uh, in case of electa uh, hdr and this also shows the loading pattern in both ovoid as well as in the tandem for hdr uh, iridium using iridium 192 so this will help us to in creating the pear shaped isosceles line in case of csrx so this slide shows the dose fractionation scheme uh, recommended by american bracket therapy society uh, in combination with the external beam radiation uh, therapy 
so the uh, most of the institution the problem what they will face is uh, when we are adding the hdr dose along with the ebt they may have some difficulty because the dose rate as well as the treatment uh, time varies between these two modalities so there is a lq proposed model available in the uh, in the journals but this is a spreadsheet given by the american bracketry society where you can enter the number of fractions uh, extra or extra beam detection details as well as the desired your preferred dose per fractionation for hdr bracketry this will finally will give you the what is the overall treatment do, uh, eqd value eqd2 for the particular patient so which we can use it in our clinic easily and readily and it will help us to in reducing the errors uh, similarly the same uh, abs also has given a excel worksheet for uh, calculating as well as recording the dose to the ors as well as to the targets so this will help us to record the details in a unified method uh, for all the patients and also it helps us to decide how many number of fraction uh, bracket therapy uh, may be required for this patient uh, in summary uh, i would like to say that uh, we have to use the proper combination of external beam and bracket therapy combination in order to achieve the overall uh, uh, outcome of the uh, csrv uh, and when we were planning the external beam and bracket therapy we have to consider the radio biological uh, point of view in reducing the overall treatment time because it should not be more than 8 uh, weeks and when we think of bracket therapy we should go for minimum 3 2 to 3 insertions as per abs recommendation and uh, and as far as cervix is concerned we asian people has the vast experience and more number of patients when compared with western world so and we have the huge experience as well so when we use the modern tools we should use it with caution so with this i am completing my slide i would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me the opportunity once again and i would like to extend my thanks to kartik and my colleague masudrana who helped me in preparing the slides thank you thanks a lot